everything is a progression, and I've never tried to copy anyone else. Even though I have traveled in a time machine to place myself in certain eras. If you remember the Marcus Singletary album, the self-titled album from 2008, many critics likened the music to the sound that was captured within such rock operas as Hair and Jesus Christ Superstar. I was going for a more late 1960s laden sound, so I incorporated horns and a lot of different elements that might have been present at the time. Even though the album was recorded at Clear Lake Audio, a great facility located in North Hollywood. So it wasn't like I was using any equipment from the 1960s in order to try to replicate the sounds of the 1960s. I based it upon what I figured I might have played around 1968 or 1969. When I got to the Smokin album in 2011, the album that Chet McCracken, formerly of the Doobie Brothers, played on, I incorporated more synths because I was moving into the 70s, the sort of 70s sound. There was a bit more of a progressive feel. I incorporated sitars, like you might have heard in Philly Soul. I had the full horn section, kind of like Chicago, or like Blood, Sweat, and Tears. But again, I didn't try to produce it like James William Gersio. I love the classic eras of music, and that would pretty much be the 1960s and the 1970s. That's the classic rock era. I love rock and roll, and I love classic rock music. But the period between 1967 and 1976, I would consider my favorite era in music because of the different innovations that occurred and the emphasis on experimentation pretty much all the way throughout the era. It was actually the experimentation that the punks of the late 70s were revolting against. The experimentation that such progressive groups as, yes, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and King Crimson were known for. Well, all of those groups, I would definitely consider influences upon my art. In some reviews, critics have pointed out that my music might even incorporate elements of punk. You know, the punk of the late 70s, maybe even the early 80s. Probably, even though I have never set out to consciously incorporate the influence of groups like the Sex Pistols or the Clash. I used to listen to the MC5 quite a bit and the Stooges. And certainly the punks of the late 70s and early 80s took quite a few cues from the Detroit Rockers, the MC5, Iggy Pop, and the Stooges, Alice Cooper. They were punk before punk was ever invented. And if my music incorporates any sort of punk element, it would likely originate from that era that I generally cite as my favorite musical period, 1967 to 1976. That's when all of those guys were active, and that's when all of those guys were very popular. Irregardless of the dichotomies present, all of those artists the psychedelic rockers, the punk rockers from Detroit, and even the classic rockers of the 70s, and the progressive groups, all of them have merged into the music of Marcus Singletary. That's really what it is. All of my favorite artists were releasing all of their seminal albums during that time. Hi, this is Marcus Singletary. Please subscribe to my channel.